we've brought all three presenters together to film. An example of this is dengue fever, is that how you say it? Whereas, no, no, that's not it, is it? <laughs> what is weird? That's what a word it was looking for. And How poor, say poor, poor poise. <laughs> Talking of dinosaurs. Starting off the news this week, NASA have released a fascinating image of Io, one of Jupiter's moons, after a close flyby on the 3rd of February. This isn't the first recent close flyby by the Juno spacecraft, as another captured some brilliantly detailed images of the full moon back at the very end of 2023. The images released this week were of a closer flyby, and captured two active volcanic plumes. Obviously, the Juno team at NASA has not had the proper time to analyse the data yet, and we look forward to when they are able to present their analysis. Io is the third largest of Jupiter's moons, and the fourth largest moon in our solar system. While these images are both fascinating and crucial to our future understanding of the moon, it is not the first time we have seen its volcanic plumes. In fact, Io is the most volcanically active body in our solar system, and its volcanic plumes can even be seen from telescopes all the way back from Earth. The moons around our two resident gas giants really are quite captivating, and we look forward to more from the Juno spacecraft. Speaking of, we now travel to our other gas giant, Saturn, to have a look at Mimas. Mimas isn't nearly as large as Io, and is in fact Saturn's smallest major moon. A study published last Wednesday in the journal Nature has said that underneath its surface lies a hidden global ocean that formed less than 25 million years ago, which in astronomical terms is really recent. In fact, the study says that the ocean resides less than 30 kilometers from the icy surface and only reached that shallow depth less than 2 to 3 million years ago, saying that that time span is too short for signs of activity at Mimas' surface to have appeared. The study also reported that Mimas may be close to its thermal equilibrium, which is the state in which the infrared energy that is expelled from the moon matches the energy that the sun beams onto it. The researchers made their observations using data from the Cassini space probe, and other bits of knowledge that we have of Mimas, thoroughly analysing its orbit and using previous predictive models of its core to come to their conclusions. Also in the news, scientists have discovered pollutants within corals that are a result of burning fossil fuels. The pollutant, called fly ash or spheroidal carbonaceous particles (SCPs for short) are ingested by the corals from the surrounding water as they grow their calcium carbonate skeletons. Corals have a long life and slow growth rates, providing scientists with annual, monthly or even weekly environmental data which can go back years. These particular corals were from Ila Grossa Bay, off the Colombretes Islands in the Mediterranean Sea. They are found within a protected marine reserve, situated 60 kilometers away from the shore, thus ensuring that the chance of local contamination from runoff was minimized. Samples of the coral were taken to a lab at the University College of London and dissolved in acid, leaving behind any pollutant particles embedded in the skeleton. These were then analyzed using an electron microscope and x-rays. The scientists discovered that the chemical signatures of the SCPs were indicative of coal or oil power plants. They found that there was a significant increase in SCPs contamination between about 1969 and 1992, which corresponds to a time when Europe was industrializing quickly and coal consumption dramatically increased. Some scientists have advocated for the presence of SCPs, which are also found in lake and marine sediments, ice cores and peat beds, to be a marker for the beginning of the Anthropocene epoch. This is the unit of geological time used to describe the most recent age in Earth's history, where human activity became the dominant influence on the planet's climate and environment. This is of importance to those scientists who are trying to better understand the history of human impact on the natural world. The discovery of SCPs in coral is a reminder to us all of just how widespread the impact of humans on the natural environment is and how much we have altered it, and continue to do so. 
First up in the paleontology news for this week, a study has been published looking at how early dinosaurs and their relatives may have been so successful. Looking at archosauromorphs, which include the crocodilomorphs, the pterosaurs, the dinosaurs and birds, the paper investigates whether differences in their locomotion style could explain the later success and diversity of dinosaurs in particular. By using a method that analyzes the shape of the same bones in different animals, the researchers found that the group including dinosaurs, birds and pterosaurs show more variable limb shapes and ratios than any other group, showing that they had a wider range of modes of locomotion and that this variability generally increased throughout the Triassic, as well as undergoing shifts in diversity after extinction events. The crocodilomorphs and their relatives, however, appear to have been more limited and their locomotory disparity decreased over time. The paleontologists therefore hypothesize that perhaps the greater variability in locomotion gave the dinosaurs a particular competitive advantage in the changing climate at the end of the Triassic period and had a significant role to play in the following success of the dinosaurs as a group. Also in the paleontology news is the very exciting description of a new fossil assemblage with exceptional preservation of soft tissues. Located in southern France, this new site is called the Cabrieres Biota, and it dates to the early Ordovician period, over 470 million years ago. About a hundred assemblages of exceptional fossil preservation from older Cambrian rocks are known, such as the famous Burgess Shale in Canada, and around 30 other Ordovician assemblages have been found too, but this new one is particularly significant as it represents a polar environment. 470 million years ago, this region of France would have been an open marine habitat in the southern hemisphere near the South Pole, sitting on the margin of the ancient supercontinent in Gondwana. The vast majority of other similarly aged sites that preserve soft tissues represent temperate or tropical paleo environments, so it's very rare for a polar environment to be studied. The paleontologists have looked at hundreds of fossils from the new site, finding that sponges and algae are abundant, while echidnoderms are very rare. Mollusks, brachiopods and cnidarians are all represented, as well as other extinct groups of organisms such as trilobites and others. Armoured, worm-like animals called Lobopodians were present here too, the group that includes the famous Hallucigenia, showing that this was a highly diverse assemblage with a mix of Cambrian and early Ordovician forms. The ecological structuring was found to be comparable to modern polar communities, and it potentially acted as a refuge for these organisms from the generally high temperatures of the waters during the early Ordovician. And finally, we're staying near the South Pole, but traveling forward in time many millions of years, as fossils of what might be terror birds have just been reported from Antarctica. Coming from Seymour Island, from rocks dating to the early Eocene epoch around 50 million years ago, two fossilized toe claws from large birds have been discovered near each other on the island. Based on the robustness, size and curvature of the claws, they seem to have belonged to Koreamiform birds, which includes the still-living Cereomas plus the infamous Terra birds, members of the family Forest Rachidae. Further analysis of the claws suggests that they came from a Forest Rachid or a Forest Rachid-like bird, which would have been a very large predator with an estimated body mass of around 100 kilograms. These large terror birds likely preyed upon the diverse marsupials and hoofed animals that may have also been found here. Although it's still limited fossil data, the presence of these claws belonging to such a large avian predator significantly changes our understanding of the ecosystems of early Eocene Antarctica, and it appears that giant carnivorous birds were the apex predators of the continent at this time, which would have been significantly warmer than it is today. Some very exciting discoveries then. Well, that's it for this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed, and as always, we'll see you on Sunday.